Hello there. I've been expecting you. I'm John Rhys Davis with Lamplighter Theatre. Welcome to Abingdon Falls. It won't take long till you see why people are drawn to this New England village, where neighbors visit and children play. It's a place of history, mystery, and new beginnings. But first, there's something you need to see and someone you need to meet. His name, Finian Jones. You might say he's a collector, but once you step inside his shop, you'll see he's much, much more. He's a collector of stories from rare books of times long past. So enjoy a cup of Finian's finest blends as he invites you to an unexpected journey, one you are about to experience. Well, if it isn't Mr. Bob Bass. Yes, here to bring blazing sunshine into your <laughs> partly cloudy with a 20% chance of precipitation on the summit kind of day. Oh, well, actually, I was thinking that it's... Yeah, well, it here to of... offer a dazzling rainbow to your fog and shroud in life. Oh, oh uh, well, I really do not. <laughs> here to deliver hope, healing, and happiness mm. to the otherwise dreary, drab existence of the fair hobbit citizens who populate the TV5 viewing area. Ah. <laughs> Oh, are you finished? Not quite, mm. but that'll do for now. You know, one day, Finny, and someone out there is going to see my God-given weather forecasting talent for what it really, truly is. Uh -huh. And then I'll take a great big bite from the great big apple, <laughs> New York City. Oh, wonderful. Uh, but for now, I'm stuck here in Abington Falls, nibbling on a kumquat. Oh, well, you know, Bob, though, though a kumquat is somewhat small and sour, and it's hard. The fruit is sweet. Any chance we could stop with the whole fruit thing there, Finian? If you like. Thank now, you. Now tell me, Bob, how long have you been doing the uh, the weather? Well, let me see. 23 years. Oh, yes. well, it sounds like it could be time for a promotion. You know, I've been saying exactly the same thing myself for 23 years. Oh, but my boss keeps holding me back. Well, you know, Bob, sometimes a promotion is merely a matter of knocking on the correct door. Such as... This one. After you. Finian, do you know what my problem is? Oh, I do. I'm overqualified. Oh. I have all these magnificent talents. Sometimes I just amaze myself. Mm -hmm. But no one truly appreciates my gifts, especially my boss. No one has any idea about the hard work and skill it's required to get where I am. Do you know how long it takes me just to get my hair to look this great? Well... You know, I feel like you understand my predicament. Oh, most assuredly, I do, Bob. That is why you, my friend, deserve the VIP treatment. Exactly. Precisely. Just yeah. climb up on Rolo and we'll get right oh, to oh, it. Oh, 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 the, uh, the rolling ladder y thing? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, about that, um. I, um, actually have a fear of rides oh. and heights. Ah. And tight spaces? Ah, well, yeah. when you learn to embrace the tight spaces, my friend, you can ride on the heights. Huh? Well, indeed. So, not ready for the heights, then we will adjust our sights. Just, just come this way, please. Thank you. <laughs> for you, Bob, I have chosen an extremely exquisite and exceptionally excellent experience to explore. Ah, you extemporize so extravagantly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. And it's right over... here. Okie dokie. Uh... Excuse me, these are all kids' books? Indeed. Bottom shelf, number 17 from the left. Red book. Would you mind getting it for me there? Huh? Yes, yes. If you, if you get down on your knees, then uh, you'll see. What? The greatest treasures are revealed, and we're on our knees. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> there once was a big man named Self, who thought he deserved the top shelf. But the more Self pursued, the smaller he grew. And now... 
He's a sad little elf. 17, I got it! <laughs> oh, I certainly hope you do. Now, oh, what was that you were saying? Ah, uh, just a saying. This way, please. All right. Now, what I'd like you to do, Bob... Oh, hold on. Mm -hmm. I know the drill. <laughs> Read the book. My perspective is enlightened. My heart is inspired. Etc., etc., etc. The etc. is the most important part. Oh, so which room do you have for me, ah, huh? Uh, I happen to love the beach room. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How about the throne room, huh? Oh, Mr. Bass, <laughs> you deserve something much better. I sure do. Yeah, something we affectionately call the JC. Oh, the JC? Huh? The judges' chambers? Oh, how about a Jacobean Coliseum? No, it, oh. the gentleman's closet. Huh? Yes, please. You know, this looks really tiny <laughs> and really dark. Well, let's fix that. Uh, here, this little light of mine, I'm going to let Look, it... Look, maybe you me. didn't hear me earlier. Oh, I heard you. More than you know. The question is, Mr. Bass, are you truly ready for a promotion? Well, of course I am, but what is that... In school, you take a test before you get a promotion, right? Right. And God gives us tight times to test us. Humbling happenings to help us. You know, it feels like the walls are closing in. <laughs> Could I leave now? Well, of course you can. You can leave any time you want. But what? if you leave, you'll stay right where you are. Huh? Because there's really only one person holding you back from that promotion. My boss. You. Uh, Take the test and God will promote you his way. <sighs> Whatever. Do you have what it takes, Mr. Bass? I do. You don't. I don't. You don't, because it really comes down to who will win the battle. I don't understand. A battle? Yes, gotta go. Bye. But, 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 but uh, how did I get to be here? I gotta sit down and go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, you're not a ma'am. You're a mop. <laughs> Thought you looked a little skinny. Nice hair, though. It is so cramped in this place. I have got to get out of here. I don't deserve this. Ah! Wait. That's just a mirror. And that's just me. Oh. Take the test, Bob. Let's take the test. Well, I suppose I could use this bucket for a seat. Ha. Ah. So this is Finian's idea of the VIP treatment, huh? Very interesting predicament. Oh, gotcha. All part of the test. A kid's book. Well, here goes. Teddy's button. Oh, huh. huh? okay. He stood in the center of a little crowd of village boys. His golden head was bare in the blazing sun, but the crop of curls seemed thick enough to protect him from its rays and he was far too engrossed in his occupation to heed any discomfort from the heat. A slim, delicate little lad he was, with a finely cut face and blue eyes that by turns would sparkle with animation. There were guns firing, shells flying, yes. and swords flashing and hacking oh. away. The enemy poured in with red faces and gnashing teeth. But my father stepped forward, and he drew his sword. No one could stand against him. No one. He cut and he slashed. Arms and legs and heads rolled up as quick as lightning. You tell him, Teddy. Yeah, 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 Teddy. Teddy. Yeah. I love this part. My father seized the flag and looked around. He was alone. The other soldiers had been beaten back. But was he in a worry? Certainly not. No, sir! He gave a loud hurrah! Hurrah! Picked up his sword and fought his way back with an even greater fierceness. It was a race for life and he ran backwards the whole way. He wasn't going to turn his back on the enemy until he reached his own colonel! Yay! But just a few yards away from safety, he saw one of his comrades lying injured, shot in the leg. He turned back and carried him to safety. Then, turning to his colonel, with his last breath, he said, Captain dead, sir, but I've got the flag. He saluted and then dropped dead at the colonel's feet, blood gushing out of his heart. 
over his clothes and over this button. And 30 bullets and six swords had gone through my father's body. He was a soldier of soldiers. Wasn't it 20 bullets the last time, Teddy? And three swords? And that's the story of my button, the one I wear on my jacket now and will carry till the day I die. Yeah! And did your father have only one button on his coat? Who are you? Only a girl. Pay no attention, Teddy. The coat was sent to my mother with only one button on it. If you'd been through a battle and killed so many people, you would have lost all your buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah who are you? Yeah, Come you? on. So, is this a true story you tell? Of course it's true. Well, I don't believe a word of it, and I'm leaving before I have to hear any more. You were never invited to listen in the first place. Who is she, Sam? A girl who doesn't know anything. Like most girls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she didn't believe me. You can't let it bother you, Teddy. But it was my father's honour, she questioned, Sam. Yes, you should have slugged her. I couldn't slug her. I wish I could, but she's a girl. And good soldiers don't fight girls. If only she'd been a boy, then I would have slugged her. And you would have won. But I'd be in trouble again. Mother says I get in too many scuffles. But I don't understand. If soldiers can fight, then why can't boys? Probably the same reason why they don't let us carry swords. Yes, Grandmother was quite angry about that. You did put a hole in her dress. <sighs> Perhaps I wasn't quite truthful about the bullets when I told the story. I think it was six bullets and three sword cuts. I forget sometimes when I tell it how many there were. But that girl said she didn't believe a word of it. I wouldn't worry about that as much as your grandmother. She's coming this way, and she doesn't look happy. I forgot to milk the cows this morning. I'll see you tomorrow, Sam. Forgetting to milk the cows this morning, and then late for dinner, you little scamp. Your father was never late. Never? As I recall, Teddy, your father was half an hour late to our wedding because he'd gone hunting. Well, there was that. Mm. Um, but he brought you a nice deer for dinner. <laughs> yes. Oh, it was a lovely day. <laughs> so, how was school today, Teddy? It was fine until the end. Mm? I think I need an enemy. Boy? You need an enemy like a dog needs fleas. <laughs> Why do you say you need an enemy? To carry on with, you know. He would lay traps for me, and I would for him, like David and Saul. And perhaps, if he did something dreadfully wrong, you'd let me fight him. <coughs> Just once in a while. Then you think that would be nice? Fighting isn't the only grand thing in the world. Peace is grander. Oh, Teddy, remember the verse we learnt last night? Yes. Blessed are the peacemakers. Yes. But you must have an enemy to make peace with. And I haven't one. You are trouble in the making, Teddy Platt. I almost found an enemy today. But she was a girl. She was an awful girl, though. More awful than most, even. I told the story about Father, and she didn't believe me. A girl, you say? I'd never seen her before. She'd make a very fine enemy, though. Must have been Grace's daughter. Ah. I heard she came back to town yesterday to stay with her father for a while. Mm. That will be good for Silas to have his daughter and granddaughter with him. He's been so lonely. I suppose Grace's husband is at sea again. What does her husband do? Oh, he's an admiral in the Queen's Navy. He goes out on a ship for great lengths of time, so she's come with her daughter to stay for a while. No wonder she was wearing that ridiculous sailor's dress. Oh, I made some muffins today. It would be a nice gesture for you to deliver a basket to them and welcome them to town, Teddy. Indeed. 
A fine idea. But one doesn't deliver muffins to your enemy. David never got muffins from Saul. This little girl is not your enemy. <sighs> if only she were a boy. Muffins. I have to bring her muffins. Look who's here. What are you doing here? Coming over onto our farm? Onto our footbridge? I'm delivering something to your mother. Now get off the bridge so I can cross. You're to let me cross over first because I'm a girl. Boys never go back and a soldier's son would never even think about it. I can't turn my back on the enemy. I'd disgrace my button if I did. And that silly button. It's not silly. No matter. I got to the bridge before you. I began to cross it first. And you, who are you? I've been crossing this bridge for years. My name is Nancy Wright. That's who I am. And I mean to come over first. So you turn back. I never go back. Then I shall push you over into the water. Come on and try then. Boys always ought to give way to girls. Always. You're not a proper boy at all. Well, you're not a proper girl. You're wearing a boy's hat and a boy's jacket. It's my father's. I'm a sailor's daughter and everyone can see I am. If you say you're a soldier's son, why don't you dress like one? I have my button. And it's been in the thick of a horrific battle. That's more than you can say. Sailors don't know anything about fighting. You know as much about sailors as you do about your button. I believe you just pick the old thing up out of the gutter. If you weren't a girl, I'd, I'd fight you right here. I could lick you. I've more muscle than you. A girl with muscle? <laughs> That's only a bit of fat. How dare you? My father is an admiral in the Queen's Navy. My father was a hero in the Queen's Army. Charge! Charge! Get off me! That was fun. Here. I'll, I'll help you to shore. I don't need your help. Nor do I want it. You tried to drown me. If, if you're a sailor's daughter, you oughtn't be afraid of the water. Sailors are in it all the time. They're on it, not in it. And sailors are much braver than soldiers. How would you like it if you were fighting bravely, even winning? And then the very land swallowed you up. That's how it is for sailors. Their ships can sink and they'll drown at sea, even if the battle was won. I suppose I never considered that. But they've no banners or red coats or a band. <sighs> what are you doing on my bridge anyway? Bringing you and your mother some muffins. <sighs> Here. They might be a bit soggy. Where were you going? To meet the Colonel. He's joining us for tea. The Colonel? Why, he's very brave. And he's led in many battles. More than anyone I've ever heard of. And he's a soldier. Why would he be having tea with you? He is indeed brave. And she knows my father is very brave too. And that's why he's joining us for tea. But now my dress is soaked. Look what you've done. Goodbye, you terrible button boy. And never come back. Colonel is having tea with my enemy. Yes, Mother, I'll try. I really will. Hmm. I'll keep my hands tight in my pockets and my feet close together. And I'll pretend that every word that comes out of the vicar's mouth is... It's, it's like a bullet from the firing squad. I don't want you to start thinking of church as a firing squad, Teddy. If it will keep me good, you do. And I will be so good today, Mother. I promise. 
just as you promised last Sunday, when you pulled the bonnet off Mrs. Key's head in the middle of prayer. She was snoring. I couldn't resist. Oh, please resist the temptations today. Yes, Mother. Now sit in this pew. But look who's in front of us. That awful Nancy. Shh. I can't sit behind her. Teddy. She's making faces at me. Oh, ignore her. Look at your songbook. Come now, see this silly button. What a funny little toy. Can you say that again? And the stories never ceasing from that dreadful button boy. I hate you! Oh, Teddy! Oh. I'll try a bit harder to be good. Oh, you'd better. This is going to be a severe trial, but I'll pretend I've been gagged. Better you do it than me. I even heard him say it clear as day. And I was up in the choir. You promised me you'd try to be good today. I did try. Oh. I did. And perhaps you'd be pleased to know that my hands and feet were being very still, even as I spoke it. <sighs> there will be no playing with Sam or any of your friends today. Oh. You'll do your chores and go to bed early. <sighs> yes, Mum. Hmm. You ought to be thanking your mother. She's not taking a switch to you. That's what I'd have done. <laughs> Why, with that sort of behaviour, I wouldn't be surprised if the vicar himself asked you not to come back to church. <laughs> Do you, do you think he heard? Oh, well, everyone <gasps> heard. And and could he actually ban me from church? He could. <laughs> and I wouldn't blame him if he did. I'd be like one of those soldiers, kept away from the enemy's lookout tower, and I'd have to fight my way back in. Oh, not everything is about being in a battle, my boy. You must learn to behave yourself and act politely and respectfully. If I were banned by the vicar, no one would like me. Sam... Or carrots, or Harry. Why, their parents probably wouldn't even let them play with me anymore. <laughs> it's a miracle they do now. <laughs> even Mrs. Henry would dislike me and give me more arithmetic problems than anyone else at school. Why, that would be terribly dishonourable to be banned by the vicar, wouldn't it? Terribly. Oh, and I'll finish your potatoes. I'll try even harder to be quiet next time, Mother. I promise. Hmm. I should hope so. Think if the Colonel heard about it. Why, he'd be disgraced that a brave soldier's son would behave that way. He can't know about it. But do you think anyone will tell? I think the best you can do is try harder to behave yourself. Yes. Yes, that's what I will do. Did the vicar say anything when he left today, Mother? Hmm. He mentioned your behaviour. He was none too pleased. Your actions were not honouring to the congregation trying to worship, and, and even worse, not honouring to God himself. Mother, do you really think I'll be banned from church? Well, Reverend Upton is a gracious man. But, Teddy, I wish you would fight as bravely for your own self-control as you do for the honour of your father's button. Then you wouldn't be in this kind of trouble. Uh, I wonder who might be visiting today. Oh, good afternoon, Alfred. Good afternoon. Uh-oh, the vicar's messenger. Oh, dear. Uh, the Reverend Upton has asked me to come and pay a visit here today. <laughs> is uh, Mrs. Platt at home? She is. Please come in, Vic. Oh, yes, I see. Hello, Alfred. Ah, hello. Yes, uh, the Reverend Upton wanted me to, to fetch the boy, Teddy, oh. and bring him to the vicarage for tea. Hmm. And a discussion. Of course. Teddy, get your hat. But I think I've, I've had enough tea for the day, and I'm rather full after eating all those potatoes. Teddy. But please tell Reverend Upton, thank you for his kind offer, but... Get your hat on, young man, and start marching. Go on, Teddy. Yes, Mum. <coughs> Reverend Upton, hmm? the boy is here for tea, Teddy Platt. Oh, very good. Thank you, Alfred. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll show him through. This way, young man. Hello, Teddy. Good afternoon, Reverend Upton. I know I said something terrible in church today, and I should never have said I hated that awful Nancy, even if she is the worst enemy ever. But she doesn't believe my button is real, and... Whoa, slow down there, boy. Take a seat. Have some tea. <sighs> yes, sir. You're a good reader, Teddy. Oh, yes, Reverend Upton. One of the best in my class. Read this for me, then. The first epistle of John, chapter 3, verse 15. Here it is. Whoever hateth his brother is a murderer. That will do. What do you think of that? I think that I'm quite glad Nancy's not my brother. Oh, I see part of our problem. Do you know that brother means every person in the world, man, woman or child? Then I deserve to be hanged. But it was father's button that I cared about. And she didn't believe me a bit and stuck out her tongue. It was like staring the enemy in the face with your hands tied behind your back. It was a severe moment, I tell you. You want to fight the enemy? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Here is something for you to eat with your tea. Oh, thank you, Alfred. Yeah, yeah. This looks tasty. Uh, would you care for some tea cakes and strawberry jam? I see we also have some plum cake. Does every boy who causes trouble get treats like this? I'm finding I don't mind it so much. Well, now we must speak seriously, man to man. Indeed. Your father was a very brave soldier. Yes, sir. Very. Have I told you the story of when he fought through two dozen enemies with just his sword? You have, many times. As I recall, you told me he died while saving the flag and another soldier. Yes. Do you want me to tell you about it again? Uh, not right now, Teddy. Do you want to grow up to be a brave soldier like your father? Oh, more than anything. But I haven't an enemy. A mother won't let me get one. There's another little verse in God's Word I'd like you to read. Ah, here we are. Read here. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Is this banner the flag, sir? Yes. The Lord's flag is unlike any other. Raised high, he charged through the enemy lines and rescued us with his love. But how can anyone fight with a flag? The king doesn't fight with weapons of hate. He fights with his banner of love. He was in a battle. Was he ever wounded like father? He was not only wounded, he died like your father. It appeared that the enemy had won. It was a frightening day. The sun went dark, the ground quaked, mothers cried, and even the enemy soldiers were afraid. But something happened three days later that brought us victory. How could you have victory if he was dead? Well, that's the best part of the story. He rose from the dead and became King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Really? Where is he now? Wherever his followers are. And now it is our assignment to carry his banner of love. Hmm. Do you think he'd let me carry the colours when I'm old enough? Only his true followers can carry the colours. And it doesn't matter how old you are. But it's not easy, son. There are many wounded soldiers and, sadly, many deserters. I would never retreat when facing my enemy. But I do think I'm a bit young. Perhaps I could be a drummer boy. The king is looking for soldiers, and the younger the better. You mean I could enlist now? That's right. God has opened up the ranks to all ages, young and old, as long as they ask him directly. You'll need a full pardon, you know. The pardon for sins, for working for the enemy, how do I receive my pardon? It's free for everyone who asks and believes. Do you believe that King Jesus died for you? Yes, sir. I have no reason to doubt it. And I'll enlist at once. Where do I sign up? Well, first you must tell God all about yourself. And don't be in a hurry. Kneel down quietly somewhere. Tell him that you've been fighting on the enemy's side. But now you're asking for his pardon, his forgiveness. Then tell God you want him to enlist you and give yourself right up to him for now and forever. If I enlist, shall I have to be God's soldier forever and ever till I am an old man of a hundred with white hair and no teeth? 
Would you rather be a soldier of the enemy? Oh, no, sir. You're quite right to think it over. I would rather you didn't decide too hastily. I think I should like to enlist. But who shall I have to fight? Are these real enemies or only make-believe? I will tell you about your enemies after you've enlisted. I can show you a very real one that is your worst enemy if you return. Can you? A real live one? A real live one indeed. Before you go now, I'd like to pray with you. Kneel down with me, son. Loving father, another lamb I bring thee. Guide him in his decision. And if he enters thy fold, grant that his name may be written in your book of life and that he may fight a good fight of faith and love. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Now, go home, think about it, and let me know what you decide. Bessie's stall too, Teddy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Mother. You've seemed very thoughtful since your meeting with the vicar. He gave me much to think about. Mother, mm -hmm. when did you enlist in the Lord's Army? When did I enlist in... Oh, shortly before I married your father. And he... Did he enlist as a boy, like me? No, he was a grown man. But he often said he wished he'd come to the Lord sooner. I think... I think God is waiting for me. It's probably best not to keep him waiting. I'm done with the feedings. May I go and spend some time by myself for a bit? Certainly. But don't be too long. It'll be getting dark shortly. God, have you been waiting for me? I've come to enlist. I've forgotten all that Reverend Upton told me to say, but will you forgive me of my sins and write my name down in that book you have in heaven? Theodore James Platt is my name. Oh, Platt is with two T's. I've come to be your soldier forever and ever. Please help me to hold up your colours well. Help me to be a good boy for Mother. And, and Lord, please tell Father I enlisted this afternoon. Good afternoon, Teddy. I've come to tell you grand news. <clears throat> Reporting for duty, sir. Ah, uh, new recruit, eh? Yes, sir. Well, please, come in. I enlisted in the Lord's Army yesterday. That is indeed grand news. May God keep you true to himself. And now I'm ready to fight the enemy. Ah, yes, the enemy. I happen to have one right here waiting for you. Follow me. My enemy's here. Come, you'll see. Now, stand right here. I will count up to three, and when I get to three, turn round quickly, and you shall face your most frightening enemy ever. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. One, two, three. Oh. That's just me in the looking glass. Teddy Platt, this is your worst enemy. Hmm? And the longer you live, the more you'll see what a formidable and mighty foe he is. I don't understand. Sit down here, and I'll try to explain. As you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you will find you have two Teddies to deal with. That would be grandmother's nightmare come true. There is a good Teddy, and a bad teddy. The bad one is your enemy. Now, you said you were angry with that little girl. 
Are you still angry? I've forgotten all about her. I don't love her, but I don't hate her either. The bad Teddy in you doesn't really like her, but the good Teddy will. You must fight against the bad Teddy and overcome him. Jesus will help you. He doesn't command his soldiers from behind. He goes into battle with them. Then I'm sure to beat my enemy. Well, I wish that were always true, but even with your captain with you, there will be times when the enemy will get the best of you. I think I know. Last week, a fellow said to me, come with me and we'll take some apples from the Winslow's orchard. I very much wanted to, which was the bad me. But now I clearly see that would be stealing. That's the good me, isn't it? Quite right. Keep close to your captain, Teddy, and hold his banner high. <sighs> Have you finished feeding the cows? It's nearly time for you to get to school. Yes, but I was wondering something. What would that be, Teddy? What do you think is the very ugliest name a boy could ever be given? Now, why would you ask such a question? You're not calling anyone names, are you? Oh, no. It's for my enemy. Oh. It's the bad me. I need a hideous name. One that would describe a very evil person. I think you ought to get to school and use that brain of yours for something useful. Like learning. <laughs> Here's your lunch, Teddy. Have a good day. Yes, Mum. Perhaps goggles or grubby or toad. It must be an absolutely terrible name. How else will I talk to my enemy? Worm face. No. Egg splat, perhaps? Oh, hello. Nancy! Don't come near me, button boy. But I was hoping to see you before school. Why? So you can try and drown me again. Stay away. Wait. I just want to talk to you. You're as slow as a snail. Can't catch me. Oh, yes, I can. You'll never get me now. Just watch me. Ha! Now that you're up a tree, you have no place to go. Ugh. Look at me, button boy. I'm higher than you could ever climb. I can climb higher than that. Ugh. Not bad for a soldier, boy. You soldiers keep your feet on the ground. Unlike we sailors, we need to climb ship masts and rigging. Soldiers never climb. I would argue with you. But I'm not allowed to. My captain won't let me. What are you talking about? What captain? Jesus is my captain now. I've never heard of such a thing. And he won't let you argue? Yes. And it's rather annoying. I would like to argue. Here. I have something in my pocket I wanted to show you. What is it? This is my banner. That's just an old handkerchief. No, it's my banner of love. See, I even wrote the word love on it. I made it last night. It's a banner of love that I'm going to carry for my captain. What in the world are you talking about? It means I must love... Even you. I don't want you to love me. I've got to do it. Ugh. No, 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 don't worry. It, it just means that I'm going to be kind to you and care about you. Like I do with my mother and grandmother. How are you going to do that? I'm not quite sure. One thing is, I'm never going to get angry with you again. Really? And it's hard. Very hard. But... I've got to tell you that I'm sorry I wouldn't let you cross the bridge first. And I'm sorry I said I hated you in church. Are you really sorry? I think I am. At least part of me is. My enemy isn't, but I am. And you'll never get angry with me? 
or act mean towards me again? No, I never will. And I'll even share my apple with you. Here. Thank you. You should have some too. We'll share. Thanks. Here. So, does this mean I need to love you too? I think you're better. Because it'll make it easier. Hmm. Well, I will then. If you do one thing. What is it? Give me that old button of yours. Give you father's button? Never, never, never! Never? Never! I'd rather be shot dead, or drowned dead, or hung dead, or chopped into tiny little bits. I'll never give it up. It's going to be sewn on my coat until I'm 100. And then, when I die, it will be buried with me. Do you know what would happen if I lost my button? What? I would drop down dead and die. And my heart would burst and break. And if I didn't die quickly enough, I wouldn't eat or drink. But instead, I would lie sadly in my grave. And the next morning, you'd find me all stiff and cold, with my glassy eyes staring up at heaven like an old dog hit by a wagon. Oh, my. Well, I'll never love you properly until you give me the button. Perhaps you could just like me a little instead. I might be able to do that. We should get to school. You don't want to be late. <coughs> Here, I'll help you. So, you're going to be nice to me because Jesus is your captain? Yes, and his banner is love. So I need to love everyone, whether I like them or not. Why? It's his top command. Has Jesus any sailors? I've never heard of him having sailors, so I think not. Then I don't want to belong to him. But I'm glad that we are sort of friends now. Why is that? Because Sally White told me you tell wonderful stories, and I do like stories. Would you like me to tell you about when I went through a secret little door on the side of an oak tree and found steps to a lost world? Oh, yes. Well, it all happened one day when I saw lightning strike the big oak tree in Farmer Green's field. I could see the smoke from a distance, and as I got closer, I noticed light coming from inside the trunk of the tree. And just as I peeked, Good morning, Teddy. How are things in the Lord's army? Fine, Reverend Upton. But I still have not come up with a name for my enemy, so I don't know how to talk to him. Ah. Have you had any battles with him yet? Indeed. I had one yesterday. Grandmother was upset because I'd used her best handkerchief to make a banner of love. I didn't really think it was naughty, but she was quite upset and locked me up in the woodshed as punishment. Well, it's probably best to ask before taking your grandmother's handkerchief. Mm. But she didn't know I could reach the window in the woodshed, so I crawled out after she left. And did she find out? No. After I escaped, I realised it had been the enemy telling me to crawl out of the window, and I shouldn't have done it. So what did you do? Why, I crawled back in, of course. But it was easier to get out than in because my trousers caught on a nail and I got stuck with my legs sticking out of the window. <laughs> That's where Grandmother found me. Oh, dear. She helped me out and I explained what happened and I was listening to my captain and trying to obey. And I told her I was so very sorry, but she didn't believe me. It sounds like a battle indeed. Yes. I don't want to be lazy or disobedient or a bully. Bully! That can be my enemy's name. What do you think? Well, I think no matter what you name your enemy, you need to remember to stick close to your captain, for he reminds us that we can do nothing without him. Then I shall stay in constant communication with my commander. We will battle Bully together. Bully. Yes, I do like that name. So, how 
do we play this game? It's great fun. See, everyone we see is an enemy. And we have to get past them without them seeing us. We must crawl through long grass or up trees. Or hide in bushes? Yes, whatever it takes. And you ought to be pleased. You're the first girl I've ever let play this game with me. What if we don't meet anybody? Then it won't be any fun at all. That's why we're going down to the river. There are always people fishing down there. Now walk quietly. Imagine that the first person who sees us will shoot us dead. But they won't. You must believe they will. I see the enemy now. Where? Who? Under the tree by the riverbank. But he'll be easy to hide from. He's sound asleep. Ah, Farmer Green. He's got an awful temper. He'll make a good enemy. But not a very difficult one. Shh! If he wakes up, we're both in trouble. We must tiptoe past him. Seems rather cowardly of a soldier, though. Here's your enemy, sleeping, and you ought to be able to capture him, not merely sneak by. It would be fun to take him prisoner and tie him up with his own fishing line. But if he awoke, you'd have more than your imaginary enemy to deal with. I'm certain we could do it so silently he wouldn't wake up. Don't you think we could? It would be very funny. I think we should try it. And <laughs> we did it! <laughs> he didn't even stir! I'd like to see his face when he awakes. What a sight! Yes, a sight. <sighs> What's wrong? I'm afraid I'm going to have a fight with Bully. I do want to leave Farmer Green there. Awfully, I do. But it's very naughty. And I don't think my captain approves. I shall have to go back and set my prisoner free. Oh, you mustn't. You'll wake him up and, and then you'll catch it. Let him undo himself. A soldier must do as he's told. Are you coming with me? Doing this. Shh, we're nearly done. <coughs> we certainly tied these knots tightly. What? <coughs> <coughs> what? 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 What's going on here? <coughs> Please, sir, if you keep still, I shall undo you very soon. <coughs> and I won't break your line if I can help it. <coughs> I, I, I'm tied to a tree. Did you, did you do this? Well, <coughs> yes, but. You scoundrel, how dare you! You are the plague of the village, and a good thrashing is what you will get, or my name isn't Jonathan Green! Please, Mr. Green, I'm almost done untying you. I'll teach you a lesson, my boy. One that you will never forget. Where's that rope I brought with me? Let go of him! You're hurting him! Just run, Nancy! Get out of here! I won't leave you with this terrible, mean man! Now let go! Ah, Now, seems to me you have a choice. You can either try to run and let me apply my whip to the seat of your knowledge, or you can be still and let me tie you to the tree like you did to me. <laughs> What's fair is fair. Ow. <clears throat> he tied us much tighter. And we tied him. I'm getting <sighs> scared. It's getting dark and no one knows we're out here. We could be here all night. <gasps> we could be eaten by a wild beast and we wouldn't even be able to run. <sighs> He's an awful man. A terrible, awful man. We'll pray to my captain. He's always with us. He's not with us now, Teddy. No one is. We're alone. Completely alone. What if...
if we die here, tied to a tree? That would be terrible. Yes. And Grandmother would be angry if I died tonight without feeding the cows. Surely someone will come. I can no longer feel my arms. This rope is tight. Did you hear that? What? Is it a lion? We don't have lions in these parts, silly. Oh. We have bears and wolves. Oh! Someone's coming! Help! Help! Over here! Please help us! Well, well, well. What's happened here? Nancy! And you? Are you the Platt boy? Colonel? Yes, sir. I'm Teddy Platt. I'd salute you, but... Well, sir, my hands are tied. Yes. It's the Colonel. <laughs> I can see that. Well, what on earth happened to you? Why are you tied to a tree? Please untie us, sir, and I'll tell you everything. Oh, indeed. Well, Nancy, you'll surprise me. When we had tea, you didn't seem the the type to get into such predicaments. It's not her fault. <laughs> it was my idea to tie up Farmer Green with his fishing line. I see. But then I felt terrible about it. Uh -huh. So I returned to untie him. Ah. But he awoke before I was done. Well, from the little I know of Jonathan Green, he has quite a temper on him. Indeed. He was worse than a bear with a splinter. <laughs> he tied us up to the tree, uh, even though we explained we were trying to be good. Yeah. And there you go. <sighs> thank you, Colonel. Yes, thank you, sir. Mm. I'm deeply embarrassed that you found me this way. I'm usually much more soldier-like. You're John Platt's son, isn't that right? Yes, sir. Soldier in the 24th Regiment, who died in battle rescuing the colours from the enemy. And I've heard about you. Heard that you can tell a fine story of your father's days at war. Oh, I can. Would you like to hear it? Uh, no, not now, son, but tell me. Why did you decide to go back and untie the farmer? Well, as I was running away, I heard the command of my captain, Jesus, to return to my post and untie him. Hmm... But you are not such a paragon of virtue generally, not from what I hear. Wasn't it you who scared our dairy maid last summer when you placed a frog in her milking can? Yes, sir. Yeah. My friends and I. <laughs> but I've changed, sir. I'm trying to be a much better soldier. Uh -huh. Have you heard the news? No. What's happening? Soldiers are coming to town in the next day or two. To to our town? Indeed. They'll only stay for a night. They're on their way to London. Real soldiers? Right here? Oh, that is jolly exciting. Uh, I thought you'd be pleased. We'd best be getting home, Teddy, and let the Colonel continue his walk. Our mothers will be getting worried. Yes, yes, quite, quite. You should be going. Thank you again, Colonel. Thank you, sir. <laughs> At ease. Carry on. I just met the Colonel, and soldiers are coming to town this week. What a wonderful day. Except for getting tied to a tree and eaten alive by mosquitoes. Oh yes, I nearly forgot that part. Still, what a wonderful day. Mrs. Henry's question twice. I saw you, staring out of the window. You ought to be thankful she didn't have you write sentences during break. It was difficult to pay attention today. I wonder when the soldiers will be here. I'm sure you'll hear their drums and the ruckus they bring. It's not like a soldier will suddenly appear under a tree. Look! A soldier under the tree! Very funny. No, look! He's reading. He looks very official in his red coat and stripes. He looks very interested in his book. Let's go talk to him. Perhaps if he was a sailor. But I told Mother I'd help with dinner. Go talk to your soldier if you want. Very well. I excuse me, sir. Oh, yes, lad. Can I help you? You're a real soldier. A real and true soldier. I am. I've been a soldier for six years. It's an honour to meet you, sir. I'm Teddy. The pleasure is mine, Teddy. I'm Walter Saxby. Your stripes. You're a corporal. Very good. I am indeed. 
where's the rest of your regiment? It's not just you, is it? <laughs> I wouldn't make for much of an army. I've come ahead of the rest to secure billets for this evening. Places for the soldiers to lodge. Well, you should come to tea. My grandmother makes delicious biscuits, and she says soldiers are welcome in our house. Well, there's nothing as tempting as homemade biscuits when you've been living on canned beans. I think I'll join you. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, uh, don't forget your book. What are you reading? The Bible. It's my order book and my best friend in the world. What's an order book? It gives you your daily commands, what you're to do and where you're to go. My captain writes my orders down in his word for me. He's my captain too. You mean Jesus, don't you? I've enlisted in his army and I'm one of his soldiers. Shake hands then, little brother. It sounds like we are comrades. <laughs> well, it's only a ten minute walk through the fields. Mother and grandmother will be very pleased to meet you. It's very kind of them to have me. I wish all the men could experience this kind of hospitality. Some towns have had teas for all the men when they march into town. Such a blessing. It keeps many of the men from drinking. Do the soldiers drink a lot? Mm, some of them do. Some drink too much. A year ago, I was the worst of them. I drank dreadfully and I couldn't give it up. But that's all a thing of the past. But do your friends drink? Yeah. And that's what makes it difficult. Sounds like you're in a battle all the time then. Even when you're not marching for the Queen. <laughs> Indeed. A battle mostly against myself, I suppose. Me too. That's why I've named the bad parts of me Bully. So I know who I'm fighting. That's a good name for an enemy. Perhaps I should use it as well. I should think you must be a good example to the other soldiers. I try. There's one in particular I'm terribly anxious about. He's been a drunkard for years. But just this past New Year's Day, he committed to giving up the drink, and he's done well. But I can see him losing strength. He doesn't have the help of our captain yet. If he's put up at any of those public houses in town, well, I don't know what he'll do. If you're by his side, surely you can help him resist. Yeah, but I'll be on to the next town getting lodging for the following night. Maybe I'll be able to help. What's his name? <laughs> they call him Bouncer. But I don't know what you can do to help. You're only a boy. I don't know either, but I can think of something. I'm quite good at thinking things up. <laughs> Down the hill there. You can see our house. I think Grandmother made pies today. You're making my stomach growl already. <gasps> Maybe that's what I can do. You said some other towns hosted a tea for the soldiers. Maybe I can do that too. Oh, that's kind, Teddy. I think that would be a bit much for your Grandmother. There's over a hundred men coming. Then I have just the person to talk to. The corporal said it would keep them from drinking in public houses. Please, Reverend Upton. A tea, you say? He said a clergyman gave a tea in a schoolroom last year for the soldiers and spoke with them afterwards. Well, do you think these rough soldiers would want to come to a tea? They'd surely enjoy some goodies and a bit of entertainment. Uh, slow down, son. Now tell me, when will they be arriving? Tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's not much time. Please, sir. I think we could put something together. I knew you would, Reverend Upton. I knew it. I'll pay a visit to Colonel Graham and see if he might help. The Colonel? Oh, yes, that's a fine idea. And after the tea, you could tell the soldiers how to enlist. Like you did me. You've become quite a soldier for the Lord already. That's what the corporal said too. I'm going to try to enlist Nancy, but I haven't tried half hard enough. She said she would only be a sailor for Jesus, not a soldier. Can she do that? Yes, I think she can. Sailors have to keep watch and learn their drills and take orders and fight under their captain, just like soldiers. I'll make sure I tell her. And I'll let you get started on planning the tea. Thank you. Or perhaps your grandmother could bake something for it. I'll tell her you need her to make 20 blackberry pies. Ask her just for two, Teddy. I don't want you to end up in the woodshed again. And I don't want to end up there either. I'm Teddy. Well, what have we here? Are you heading into the pub, little man? Oh, no. I'm here to keep you out of the pub and invite you to our tea tonight. Yeah, we've heard your vicar came around an hour ago. You're coming, aren't you? Uh, I don't know. 
We'll see. If you don't come, you'll miss out on my grandmother's blackberry pie, and that may be the biggest regret of your life. Blackberry pie. It's been a long time since I had a slice of that. You ought to come. Do, do any of you know a soldier named Bouncer? Yeah, I do. Do you want me to get him for you? Please. Bouncer! This lad here wants to have a word with you. Who is it? Ask him yourself. All I know is his granny makes blackberry pie. Are you Bouncer? Aye, oh, that's what they call me. Will you come and join my mother and grandmother and me for lunch? Corporal Saxby said you might like to come. Aye, oh, oh, that I will. If it ain't far off, my legs are still sore and they're not much good for more walking. Oh, it isn't very far at all. It's this way. All right. Do you know there's going to be a splendid tea for you all in our schoolroom tonight? Have you heard? Aye, there's little to be done in a place like this. And we're too tired to tramp into town, so well, I expect there'll be a tidy few. The corporal came to tea at our house the other night. He's a friend of yours, isn't he? <laughs> He's the best friend i got. Aye, lad. There's few of his sort in the army. For each one that tries to help us up, there are ten that try to drag us down. I suppose the Queen's Army isn't so nice to be in as the army I belong to. I reckon I've heard tell of your captain then, for that fellow Saxby is always talking to me about him. But I can't come to religion, no how. I can't make head nor tail of it. So what's made you so interested in having a soldier like me over for lunch? Oh, I'm the son of a soldier. One of the bravest you'd ever meet. <laughs> you don't say? Indeed. And I might be a soldier someday myself. Right now I'm a soldier in the Lord's Army, so I need to follow his commands. <laughs> well, I can see why Corporal Saxby was fond of you. What does your father do now? Oh, uh, he died in battle. But he died with honour, going headfirst into the danger to protect our flag and a fellow comrade. And everyone said, everyone there, that John Platt, huh? he was one of the most courageous soldiers they ever met. Oh. I still carry his button, see? Off his coat. It's my most precious possession. Oh, well, I can see. But, but you're not even looking at it. Do you want to hear the whole story? I tell it very well. You can ask anyone. No, 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 I don't think so. <clears throat> if you want to talk to Reverend Upton, the vicar, I can introduce you. He's a very kind man, and I'm sure he can talk you through your troubles. I don't think anyone can talk that well. Yeah. L lad... Thanks for the invitation to lunch, but but it's getting to be longer than I expected. I should be getting back. But we're almost there. Well, you you go on. Thanks for the invitation. Please, Mr. Bouncer, uh, will you come to the tea tonight? I don't think so. Uh, what did I do wrong? Teddy, hmm? it seems to me you've been feeding those cows for a very long time. Your mother's trying to keep your soup warm. Well, I'm thinking, so it takes longer. <laughs> that must be it. <laughs> What's troubling you? I was trying to be a good soldier for Jesus by bringing Bouncer to lunch, like Corporal Saxby asked. We were almost here, so close, and he turned around and left. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I said. Perhaps it just wasn't the right time. Perhaps I talked too much, or was too pushy, or over-eager, or dull. <laughs> I'm guessing not the latter. <laughs> but if you still want to be a good soldier, you have another opportunity tonight. Oh, the tea. And you'd better get yourself ready if you want to go. I have lots of pies for you to carry. I'll hurry. This was a fine idea, Teddy. I had no idea so many soldiers would show up. We're bursting at the seams. And they do seem to be enjoying themselves. I should say. Your grandmother's pie pans have been licked clean. The town ladies you asked to help donated a lot of tea cakes. I can't wait to help myself when they're done. <laughs> I doubt there'll be any left. Ah, the Colonel is getting up to speak. Now, I certainly hope you are all enjoying yourself this evening. 
But before we hear a few words from Mr. Upton, I should like to tell you how glad I am to be surrounded by my fellow Redcoats once more. I hope you have all enjoyed your tea. But perhaps you are unaware who was the instigator of this entire event. We must thank Mr. Upton for his untiring zeal and energy in making arrangements. We must thank the ladies for making the evening pleasant with their songs earlier and, of course, their baking. But we must also thank the little man here, I'm given to understand, for the proposal in the first instance. Is he speaking about me? I should think so. Teddy Platt. And he will speak to you better than I can. Now, my boy, have you anything you'd like to say? Speak up, boy. Uh, it wasn't I who thought about the tea. Uh, it was Colonel Saxby. Uh, I haven't anything to say, really. Oh, unless you'd like to hear my father's story. Ah, go on, my boy. Well, he was a brave soldier, like many of you. It was a cold February evening, growing dark and bitterly cold. The brave men of the 24th Regiment were rationing the supplies they had left, knowing it would be a number of days before they'd receive more. Suddenly, out of the forest, a bullet whistled past my father's ear, striking the tree behind him. Instantly, a shout erupted, and the men grabbed their swords and rifles, knowing the night would be long and their battle would be bitter. But they'd fight proudly for their country. They banded together, my father taking the front, and marched up the tree covered hill. Now, into bed with you. <sighs> the tea was a success, wasn't it, Grandmother? Most certainly. Everyone had a good time. You told your father's story with such enthusiasm. <laughs> your mother looked as though she was about to burst with pride. Mm. And the vicar did a fine job sharing afterwards. Oh, perhaps the soldiers will want to join God's army now. We shall pray so. Now, get some sleep. Good night, Grandmother. Good night. Oh, did you happen to see a hefty soldier with a thick grey moustache? I... I don't recall him. No. Me either. Oh, I suppose Bouncer never did come. I like the band. Maybe I'll be a bugle boy someday. They sure are louder than sailors. At least the ones who come to our house. Don't be so testy. You had fun last night helping with the tea. It was fine. Look, there's Jefferson. We met him. Don't they all look fine in their red coats and straight lines? I should think there's nothing better than being a soldier. Except being a sailor. Look. They're nearly ready to go. Here comes the soldier with the flag. Hello. You're the boy that was at the tea last night. What was your name again? Teddy Platt. Say it again. Button boy. We call him the button boy. Three cheers for the button boy. <laughs> Time for school, Teddy. Come on. Company. I did want to run alongside them for a bit. Did you hear them, though? Cheering for me. I'm, I'm practically a hero. You gave them tea cakes. Still, they seem. I don't want Mrs Henry putting me in the corner, so I'm off to school. Are you coming? I suppose. No. I, I think I'll run with the soldiers. That's what a man does, not his arithmetic. As a matter of fact, perhaps I'll spend the day working on my sword fighting. You're skipping school. There are more important things than grammar and sums. You might not think that because you're a girl and you don't know how to fight anyway. Teddy, why, that's just a terrible thing to say. 
I'm going to school. Suit yourself. I don't know what you're thinking, Teddy Platt, but you're headed for a heap of trouble. think you're doing jumping out at me like that. I've spilt all the milk now. But you ought to have seen your face. It's not the least bit funny. Boy, your mother and I don't know what to do with you. This whole week, ever since those red coats left, you've been trouble times ten. Oh, I'm just having fun, Grandmother. Was it fun to lock the rooster in the barn with the tomcat? It created quite the row. And scared the feathers off that poor rooster. And then... Trapping kind Mr Ludwig up in the hayloft. I brought the ladder back after 20 minutes. He didn't seem too awfully upset. He was spitting nails. I highly doubt he'll be coming around to help us out anymore. Oh, boy, you must learn. Your mother's had all she can handle from you. Yes, Mum. We'll need to talk about this more after school. Now... Be off with you. Right, settle down, settle down, thank you. Now, if you'd all take out your grammar books, we'll be working on... <laughs> Teddy Platt, get this frog out of my schoolhouse. I know this is your doing. Yes, Mrs. Henry. Come on, come on, Foggy. Come on, come on, Foggy. Settle, settle, settle down. Settle down. Settle down. Settle down. Come on. Can you catch the thing, please? We've got you. And out the window you go. Oh, thank you. Class, you may go ahead and go out for your break. Mm. I'm sorry, Miss. Teddy. I tried to be lenient with you after the excitement of the soldiers coming to town. And I'm afraid I've been too lenient. Oh, you needn't be afraid of that. But just this week, you've glued poor Sally White's pigtails together and replaced Sam's lunch with a bunch of pine cones. It was funny when he thought his mother expected him to eat that. <sighs> and now, a frog. You've become insolent and incorrigible. I've kept you in and given you extra tasks, but neither has had any effect. Now, I shall have to do what I've never yet done to you. Hold out your hand. Miss? Hold still for the ruler. One, two, three. And now you can go home. I will dispense with your attendance for the rest of the day. Yes, Mum. <sighs> Is that you? Y yes, Grandmother. Are you skipping out of school again? Boy... I was given the switch and sent home. I'm a terrible boy. Well, I'm not arguing with you there. Now, get out from behind those hay bales so that we can talk properly. Grandmother, what does the Queen do when her soldiers are defeated? I really don't know. I suppose she's sorry for them. Does she turn them out of her army? Oh, no. What does God do when his soldiers stop fighting so hard and get trampled by their enemy? Well, I suppose he's sorry too. I've let Bully get the best of me and join the enemy. And that's being a deserter. And now I will never, ever be able to go back again. I've disgraced my banner and I've disgraced my button. <laughs> Now look here, Teddy. You've been a bad boy. I'm not arguing with that. But if we fall in the mud, 
It doesn't do much good to just stay there. The only thing to do is pick ourselves up again, get ourselves cleaned off, and then walk more carefully. Can you do that? I don't think my captain will have me. <laughs> Your captain is the one who will pick you up if you ask him. He'll clean you up first rate and set you on your legs again. I'm not as good at remembering verses as your mother, but this one I do know. A just man falls down seven times, but he gets back up again. I think... I think I'd like to be alone now, Grandmother. Very well, Teddy. Teddy! Hi, Nancy. How did you know where to find me? Your mother said you were out in the field. I didn't realise how far out she meant. I'm sorry for what happened at school yesterday. That must have felt dreadful. Yes. But I realise now I deserved it. I was acting disrespectful and mean. You were. What are you doing now? Reading. Sir Knight of the Splendid Way. My grandmother gave it to me, and I'm rather enjoying it. But I must confess, I've also been daydreaming. About what? About heaven, and what it will be like to go there. Oh, tell me about it. You know I love your stories. But this isn't a story. Heaven is real, and Jesus, my captain, will be there. It's just the details that I must imagine right now. What do you imagine heaven looks like? Look yonder. See the sky over the mountains. I think something like that. Pink and gold with wispy clouds. It's beautiful. How do you think you'll get there? I picture it as such. I'm reading in a field, just like this. And I hear a rustling behind me. A lion? No, an angel. A beautiful white angel, dressed in shiny splendour, with feathery wings. He has eyes like the colonel's, and hair like Sally White's. Flaxen, my mother calls it. Flaxen, then. And the angel says, Don't be afraid. Because that's how angels always start conversations. And are you afraid? No. But I might be braver than most people. And then he says, Teddy, I've come to fetch you for heaven. I stand up, and he steps closer. You haven't always been a good soldier. But the captain says he wants you. Come along and take off your hat. The angel sounds a bit like your grandmother. Then I get up and sit myself between his wings and put my arms around his neck and he begins to go up. I see my mother and grandmother and I wave at them. Mother throws a kiss and calls out, Give my love to father. And away we go over our fields and across the high road and over Farmer Green's fields and higher and higher we fly until the mountains over there look like purple blotches. Do let me go too. I want to be on the angel's back with you. Perhaps you can follow behind on another angel. I'm not quite sure he can carry us both and I don't want to be dropped. After we get up high through the clouds, I see the gates. So tall, I can't see the tops of them. And they're covered with jewels, like Mrs. Graham wears on her fingers. Mother thinks she wears too many. And two more angels come and open the gates wide. And in front of me are hundreds of angels with trumpets, and they play like the soldiers' band. Except I hope they're in tune. Shh, this is the best part. They lead me up a hundred steps. And at the top is... The captain. I can't tell you what he looks like, but I feel what he's like. He puts his hand on my head and says, Well done, Teddy. And then I take hold of his hand, and I think I cry a bit, 
because he gets on his knees and wipes my tears and keeps... He keeps smiling at me. You're crying now. He takes me up in his arms and he carries me into the most beautiful garden there ever was. The benches are made of roses and if you want to sleep, the pillows are made up of violets. There's a crystal blue river and trees full of apples and plums and pears. You can hardly see the riverbanks because they are covered in strawberries. How lovely. And there, sitting on a bench, is his father. He runs to me and swings me around and he laughs a great big booming laugh and he shows me the little white boats we can row down the river and the bears and lions that you can ride on all day and they won't bite you but only lick your face. I want to go to heaven. Have you enlisted yet? I'm not going to be a soldier. But I talked to Reverend Upton and he says sailors can be in the captain's army too. But you must be willing to sign up for life and fight your enemy. You have an enemy? Yes. I call him Bully. And you'd have one too. It's dreadful having an enemy. Why, I've had two battles today already. What sort of battles? Well, one was when Grandmother brought in fresh honey from a hive and put it on a plate in the kitchen. Don't eat any, Teddy, she said, and then went back outside. And Bully said... Just put one finger in it. And I had to fight him very hard over that, but I ran away out of the room. I don't think I like that sort of fighting. I wish you'd give yourself to God as his soldier. I think I like being naughty best. Oh, I nearly forgot why I came to find you in the first place. What is it? My father. He's coming to visit for a few days. He'll be here tomorrow, and you'll get to see what a grand officer he is. My father was an officer. So is my father. My father was a sergeant. My father's an admiral and gives orders to all the sailors and they have to do what he tells them. My father led his soldiers through a battle. Well, well, my father will fight in 20 battles before he dies and your father only fought in one. My father is in heaven and that's the grandest place to be. Bully was nearly getting angry with you. You're such a dreadful girl for making me quarrel with you. You won't let me say my father is as good as yours. He isn't better. Let's... Let's say they're the same. Then, if you like, you can join us for lunch tomorrow. So what did you think of father? I liked your father, and I'm glad I got to meet him. Why, he seems so fine and brave. He ought to become a soldier. Teddy Platt, he is a very fine and brave sailor, and that's what he will remain. Oh, looks like a landscape. Must be Farmer Green's. Must be. Look, there's a hole in his fence. Oh, and two more sheep over there. I must say... I'm rather pleased about it. Farmer Green is horrid. He's mean to everyone. Remember, he tied us up to that tree and left us. That's a day I'll never forget. I suppose I'm also a little glad his sheep are escaping. <laughs> Only wish I could see his face when he looks into his pasture and sees they're all gone. We should round up the sheep and return them. But you just said... I know what I just said, but that was bully talking. And it's not right. The right thing to do is get his sheep back in his pasture. And remember the last time you wanted to do something right for Mr Green? It got us in a heap of trouble. Well, I'm still going to do what my captain commands. And that means loving everyone, even Mr Green. Do what you must, but I am going home. Goodbye, Teddy! Come on, you. Get in this way. You there, come along. No, no, come back here. Gotcha. You're a slippery fellow. Stop being so stubborn. Get over here. What's going on here? Mr Green, I was just getting... There's that, that boy again. 
You vagabond! You're always causing mischief. And now... Now you're stealing my sheep! Uh, no, sir. I was just trying to drive them back through the hole in the fence. Look, that's where they broke through. <laughs> Likely story. I'm sure you put that hole there yourself. I never tell a lie. And you're a... A... A what, you little scoundrel? Bully was going to say that you were a liar yourself. But I stopped him just in time. I do believe you've been out in the sun too long. Truly, if the sheep had escaped from their pasture, as you say, what business is that of yours? I wanted to be good to you. I'm sorry that I tied you up that day, dreadfully sorry, and I've got to love you. What? So I thought it would be a good plan to send your sheep back to their pasture. <laughs> you, you, you've got to love me? <laughs> and when did I ask you for any of that, young fella Milan? I don't suppose you want me to, but it's really not your choice. I've got to do it because my captain commands it. Sorry. Oh, you're a strange lad indeed. Do you speak gibberish? Oh, do you think you could manage to forgive me for that terrible day at the river and let us shake hands on it? It would make it easier for me to love you if you could. Well, you come into the house with me and I'll see you what the missus has to say to you. mary -Ann, here's a scamp from the village come to see you. Keep him here till I come back. I'm after some stray sheep. I can help you. No, you're staying right here. Looks as if you're about to get your just desserts, son. No, thank you, Mum. I'm not hungry. I'm not talking about what you eat. I'm talking about what you've got coming to you. You know it took Mr Green almost a week to settle down after you tied him to that tree. And I'm dreadfully sorry about that. Your poor mother. She's been through enough already without all this mischief of yours. I haven't been in mischief. Really, I haven't. I'm very well acquainted with mischief, Mum. And this isn't it. I was only trying to put the sheep back in their pasture. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people don't believe me. What do you think Mr Green will do? You never know with him. He isn't fond of people messing with his sheep. I wouldn't be surprised if he sharpened a switch after he gets them all rounded up. What does Farmer Green like best in the world? What kind of question's that? Just curious. Well, probably gooseberry pudding. Now, do you have any more curious questions? No, Mum. That's it. I hope you aren't thinking up more tricks to play on Mr Green. He has quite the temper, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh, yes, Mum. I'm very much aware. What's that you're knitting? A scarf for my niece. Would you like me to help you? Mother always lets me hold the yarn. No, I'm doing quite well, thank you. Would you like me to set the table for lunch? How about you sit and not say a word? <sighs> That's the hardest task of all. Well, Mary Ann, this youngster says he's on the track to reforming himself. Do you believe it? He's been able to sit without saying a word for 20 minutes, so that's something. But I don't have much faith in young boys. They're always up to something. <laughs> I'd have to agree with Mrs. Green. You're still a mischief maker. But I believe I'll give you the benefit of the doubt concerning my sheep. Oh, thank you, sir. Do you forgive me for tying you up with your fishing line? Hmm. Here's my hand on it. I may be a fool for believing you, but if you are sorry for the past, I won't be the one to rake it up. You won't regret it. Run along now. You've made your peace with me. Mother! What is it, Teddy? I need you to help me make a gooseberry pudding. I'm going out to pick the gooseberries now. 
Why do you need a gooseberry pudding so urgently? Because Farmer Green forgave me, and I need to keep trying to love him while it's still easy to do so. Will you please help? <laughs> I will. Go and pick the gooseberries. Thank you, Mother. He forgave me. He really forgave me. <laughs> oh, my little soldier. trout. That makes four for me today. Why am I not getting any bites? I'm using tea cakes as bait. But my father told me catfish will eat anything. While he was here, we went fishing together. <laughs> and he even caught one with Mother's thimble. It, it was sad to see Father go. But it is nice that you now have time to play again. You hardly need me. You have Farmer Green for a friend now. He did like that pudding I brought over. But he wouldn't make a very good friend, I'm afraid. He's got quite the temper. Maybe once I get him to enlist in the Lord's Army, he'll change. Your button looks like it's about to fall off. You'd better be careful. Yes, I told Mother yesterday that it was loose. She said she is always sewing it back on. Perhaps I should just pull it off and put it in my pocket to keep it safe. <coughs> there. Oops. <coughs> got it. Give it back, please. You dropped it. It's mine now. Give it back at once. Aha, button boy. I have it at last. And now I shall return home and have it sewed onto my jacket. I shall fight you. I will. It isn't yours. You'd be a thief if you kept it. Then shall I throw it in the river? Give it... Give it back. Give it back to me. Fine. <gasps> no. No, no. It landed in the river. <gasps> Come out! The river's too strong! Help! Help me! Teddy! Uh, uh, my, my head! You're bleeding! <laughs> Teddy, I can't swim! <laughs> no! Teddy! Teddy, come back up! Help! Help! Someone help! What is it? What's all this hollering about, girl? Teddy, he's drowning! Help him! Where is he? Where is he? He's there! He went under right over there! Oh, stand aside, girl! Please find him! You have to be alive, Teddy! Please, please, please! You found him! Is he all right? Come on, boy! Take a breath now! Come back to me now, come on! He's breathing. Come on, boy, come on. Wake up now. Oh, come on, boy, come on. He's dead. He's dead and I've killed him. No, no. I'll put him on my cart and take him to Doc Stevens. You go get his mother and get her to hurry to meet us. Oh, go on now. Go on. <laughs> Now, now, little chicks, you don't need to fight. There's plenty of food for all. Mrs. Platt! Mrs. Platt! Nancy! What's the matter? Is it Teddy? I'm sorry, Mrs. Platt. Why? Uh, he's... he's dead. No! He jumped in the river after his button and it was my fault. Oh, Mrs. Platt! Oh, God, please help my boy. Take me to him, Nancy. Where's my boy? Oh, oh, no. Mrs. Platt. Oh, Teddy. I've been trying to breathe life into him, but I'm sorry. No, don't give up, I... please. Oh. Keep trying. Oh, very well. Can you hold his feet up? Teddy. Ah. Teddy. Ah. God, please. Pray for him, Nancy. I don't know how. Oh, Father, please heal my Teddy and comfort Nancy, please. What? This can't be. What is it? I, I thought I felt a pulse, but... 
There wasn't one before. Uh, Teddy? <coughs> Teddy? Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, he's alive. He's alive. Oh, Teddy? Can you hear me? Mother. I'm here, darling. I'm uh, right here. Oh, can you say more? Oh, he's unconscious, but he's breathing. I can't believe it. As sure as I stand here, that boy wasn't alive when Jonathan Green brought him in. Thank you, Doctor. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, God. Jonathan just left to meet you. We thought he had terrible news for you. The boy seems to be sleeping peacefully. Oh, thank you. I'd like to take him home now. Yes. Very well. Yeah, keep him warm and try to give him water. Mm. I'll come by later tonight to check on him, but I must warn you, he still may not survive. He went a long time without breathing. But he's breathing now, mm. and for that I am so thankful. Whatever the future holds, it's in God's hands. Lord, we plead with you on young Teddy's behalf that you would be his rescuer, as he wavers now between life and death. We ask you to heal his body and restore his mind. We pray for a miracle. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember to be in prayer for the Platt family this week. You are dismissed. Nancy, child, have my handkerchief. Oh, Mr. Upperton, I'm a terrible and awful girl. It's my fault Teddy might die. My fault. There are many people praying for him. God does miracles. But, but what if he doesn't this time? What if Teddy dies? Then we'll see him again when there's no more pain, no more sorrow. No more death, and no more tears. Oh, I don't deserve to be in a place like that. It was all my fault. I took his button. I was teasing him. That's why he jumped in after it. George, <laughs> Nancy, no one deserves forgiveness. That's why Jesus died. Remember the hymn we just sung a moment ago? Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. But that can't mean me. Not after what I did. <laughs> Not after what I did. <laughs> He's been sleeping for three days now. There must be something the doctor can do. He's been in there for nearly half an hour. Maybe I should go and see if he needs anything. You sit right there and drink your tea. You haven't slept since you brought him home. Dr Stevens will come and get you if he needs you. Oh, how's, how's he doing? The same. But he's still breathing well and his heartbeat is steady. Will he ever wake up again? That's hard to say. He may pull through, but even if he wakes, it's, it's doubtful he'll completely recover. How do you mean? Well, his brain may not work the same. Things he could do before. Reading, walking, talking. He may not be able to do again. Oh. You must be prepared. Thank you, Doctor. Yes. Good day, Mrs. Platt. He would be simple. Never the same. I'd better put another blanket on him. It'll be chilly tonight. Mm. Winter is coming. Oh, my sweet boy. 
I'll love you no matter what. But I'll continue to pray that our God will heal you completely. You are a soldier in his army, and I believe he has special plans for you. I just hope those plans are for here on earth. <clears throat> That's all right, my love. Mother? Oh, Teddy. You're awake. He, he's awake. Where, where's my button? That's it. There we go, darling. <coughs> step by step. Slowly now. <laughs> We're almost there. Oh, there oh. you go. It's nice to finally be out of bed. Mm. But I'm so tired. My legs are wobbling. <laughs> Just rest, darling. It's fine. A month in bed is a long time. I'll make you some tea. And look at the flowers and grapes Mrs Green brought over. Oh, how nice of her. It seems as though we've had a steady stream of visitors through here. Mm. And more gifts than I know what to do with. Especially... The live ones. The live ones? Indeed. I've already let a frog and a turtle go in the garden oh. today. And I don't even want to know what's in that package from Sam. But it moves every now and again. <laughs> oh, no. Will I... Will I ever be the same? Oh, you're getting stronger every day. You've come a long way these last few weeks. But... I lost my button. I always thought I would die if I lost my button. Well, you won't. I've already lost a son, and I'm not losing a grandson. So I'm keeping you around. <laughs> now, here's your tea. Thank you, Grandmother. Teddy, I, I know you feel real sorrow for your lost button. But if you bear your sorrow well, your captain will be pleased. Maybe if I bear my sorrow well... God will somehow return my button. Oh, that button, I'm afraid, is long gone. Probably drifted out to sea by now. Perhaps. Has Nancy come to visit? <laughs> I dare say every child in town has been at this doorway. But none more than that little lass. Mm. She stops by every day on her way to school to ask how you are. Why did she never come in to see me? I always offer, but each time she tells me she can't. I would like to see her. Come on! Pull harder on that net now, girl. Let's drag it in. Strength. Oh. Oh. There. Take a look. Look at all this. The button must be in here somewhere. I certainly hope so. My back is about to give out. Thank you for helping me drag the river. Well, I couldn't stand seeing you with that long face. Trapes along the banks each day, searching for that button. Might have drowned yourself, you know. I hoped it would wash up on the shore. I don't think I can face Teddy without his button in my hand. <laughs> you might need to. Most likely that button is 30 mile downstream by now. Tin cans. Rocks. A shoe. I don't see it. But it has to be here. It has to be. I need God to give me a miracle. Don't you think he already has? Because Teddy's still alive. Because I'd come to fish at just that moment and was able to jump right in. Because he gave you a squawky scream that could be heard for miles. Hmm. I suppose that's true. You should visit your friend. I'd think he'd want to see you. someone here to see you. 
Who is it? Come on. He'll be pleased. Hello? Nancy! You came! Oh, button boy, will you ever, ever forgive me? If you had died, I would have lived the rest of my life knowing I had killed you. No, Nancy, I was just as stubborn. I shouldn't have tried to fight with you. I go to the river every day, and Farmer Green brought a big net one day, and we dragged up a lot, and I sifted through everything. But the button wasn't there. Mm. I hope it will be washed ashore one day, and so I look along the banks, but I haven't seen any sign of it yet. Don't tell Grandmother, because she'll think it's silly, but I pray every day that the Lord will return it to me. If you ask him too, maybe he'll do it quicker. That is, if you enlist. Oh, Teddy, I was such a selfish girl. I spoke to Reverend Upton after your accident and told him how awful I was, and I didn't deserve to go to heaven. And he told me that being good doesn't get us to heaven. That's why Jesus died on a cross. So you enlisted then and there? No. I still needed to think about it. But Mother and I spoke about it that evening, and she shared how Jesus came to rescue us, because we could never be good enough. Then it all started to make sense. So Mother and I prayed together that very night. Nancy, that's wonderful. So are you a soldier or a sailor? A sailor, of course. Well, at least you're enlisted. And every day, I pray that he helps you get better. And now you can ask our captain if he can bring my button back. Yes, I will. You know, I still remember in the field that day when you talked about what you thought heaven would be like. And I wondered, when you laid in the doctor's office, if you were flying on the back of an angel like you'd dreamed. All I remember is falling asleep. Oh, I'm so glad you're in the army with me, even if you're in a sailor's uniform. Yes. Now we'll be able to see what heaven is like together. So, are you fighting the enemy now too? Yes, but I do need your help. With what? I need a good name for my enemy. It's good to see you have your appetite back. Mm. Mm. Teddy, while you were resting, Mrs. Henry came round with your school lessons. Mm. It's kind of her to come by. Yes, even if it is with multiplication tables. Mm. Did you tell her the doctor said I could go to school soon? Yes, after Christmas. But that's only a couple of weeks away. Oh, were you expecting anyone? Well, not this late in the day. Uh, may I help you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Do you have a boy named Teddy Platt? I do. Oh, my name is Tim Stokes. I'm, I'm known round here as Bouncer. Bouncer? Bouncer, please come in. Uh, settle down, boy, and stay in your seat. You're hopping around like there's a squirrel in your pants. Remember, Mother, I told you about Bouncer. He's the soldier I was going to have over for tea. Yes. But, but he never came. I think I offended him. Oh, d Please have a seat, Mr. Stokes. Would you care for some dinner? Uh, no, thank you, Mum. I only have to say a few things and then I'll be on my way. Uh, I'm sorry for whatever I said to hurt you. Truly, I've thought and thought about what I said and... Did I say something to upset you? Well, you did, but... Well, nothing wrong. You see... You see, when you said your father's name, I recognised it. You knew my father? But you didn't like him. Oh, oh I, I liked him very much. We were in the same line regiment, but... but I'm the reason he was killed. No, but he, he died in battle, shot by the enemy. Uh, and he was shot because he went back for one of his injured comrades. Yes. And that soldier was me. Oh, God have mercy. You? You were the one who father saved? Aye. Your father, he was the bravest soldier I ever met. And I was the most fearful. And when the enemy charged us, I turned back and ran. I was shot in the leg. 
Your father was still carrying the colours when he came to my rescue. Oh. It was all my fault. And, and that's why he didn't come home with me that day. I felt guilty every day of my life. And then to meet John's son. I couldn't do it. I couldn't be around your family and sit at your table where, where your father ought to be sitting. Oh, you dear man. I couldn't tell you the truth. I've never been so ashamed. But you've come now. And I'm so glad you did. Oh, yes. We, we certainly are, Mr Stokes. It, it's a pleasure to meet you. The Colonel sent word that Teddy was pretty sick. That he nearly died. As you know, the soldiers were pretty fond of him. Hmm. Whenever, he, whenever anyone's telling a real lively story, we, <laughs> we call them button boy tales. <laughs> but I knew when I heard about what happened to you that I had to come back and, and, and give you something. Here. It's a button, just like father's. It is your father's button. <gasps> father's? I, I don't understand. How did you find it in the river? I've had this button ever since your father gave his life for me. It came off while they were trying to save him. But he was already gone. I held on to it that night. And I've held on to it ever since. As a reminder of your father's sacrifice for me. But when I heard you lost your father's button, I knew I had to come. Oh, it's... it's his button. Thank you, Mr Stokes. I'll sew it on your jacket tonight, Teddy. Bouncer, you do know you're forgiven, don't you? Son, I'm not deserving of forgiveness. I'm just returning what's rightfully yours. Of course you don't deserve forgiveness. If you did, then Jesus, our captain, wouldn't have had to charge through the enemy lines to rescue us. But God forgave you because he loves you. And if God forgives you, I need to forgive you too. Boy, I don't think he'd care to rescue a turn girl like me. I've done some awful bad things in my life. But, but that's why he died. To save you. Just like my father did. I'll be indebted to your father for the rest of my life, but but I can't believe God would care so much. Then, then here, take this. Oh, oh, the button. Teddy. No, I brought it here for you to keep. It's yours. Bouncer, I believe my captain sacrificed everything for me. And for you too, this button means a lot to me, but it's nothing compared to what he has given me. He gave me his life, and, and I hope, if you hold on to it, that maybe someday you'll believe God loves you, even more than I love that button. Ooh. I'll think about it, but I can't take this. You have to. It's my orders. <laughs> Another one. Now I've got four fish to your two. I'll pass you up yet. You just wait. Very well. But I'll be waiting till my old grey beard comes down to my knees and I have no teeth left. Hmm. Oh, did I tell you? A letter from Bouncer came yesterday. What did he say? He started reading the Bible with Walter and two other soldiers. He said he's starting to really feel God can forgive him. That's wonderful. Does he still have the button? He keeps it in his pocket all the time and says he remembers our conversation every time he holds it in his hand. Hey, look who's over there fishing. Farmer Green. We should call to him. And scare away the fish. He'd have a fit. Come on, let's walk over there and say hello. <coughs> Fine, but this means I win the fishing contest. You didn't win. We're continuing it tomorrow. You can't continue it later. That's like telling the enemy...
pardon me, could we resume this battle tomorrow so I may have a spot of tea? Perhaps that's how they do it in the Navy, but... Um... Sailors are out at sea for months and months. They live on salted beef and dry bread. No stopping for tea for them. Unlike your soldiers, who march through town and get to feast on tea cakes and meat pies. Shh. Look. He's sleeping. You know what we can do, don't you? Teddy, you wouldn't. Didn't you learn your lesson last time? I certainly did. Which means this time... What's in the bag? <sighs> Mother sent me some gooseberry pudding for my lunch. He'll be surprised to see it next to him when he wakes up. <sighs> All right, come on. You're a good soldier, Button Boy. Just following orders. Do you think your mother has some more gooseberry pudding at home? Yes. Let's run back and get some. Come on. I am. Teddy Platt, what are you doing? Crossing the footbridge, of course. You ought not. I'm a girl and girls should go first. But I'm a soldier and I have to scout for the enemy. Well, I'm a sailor and I can handle the enemy just as well as you can. Besides, I'm faster than you. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Charge!